Hello, it's your buddy Ken here with a definitive answer from the FAA as to whether or not you can fly at night. I sent off two letters to my friends at the FAA, Rocky Davidson in Nashville and Johnny Victory in Memphis. And I asked them two questions. One, can you be a part 107 holder and a hobbyist simultaneously and flip back and forth? And two, can I get a definite answer on the whole flying at night thing? So let's shed a little bit of light <laughs> on this situation. <sighs> That's a lot better and a lot warmer, a lot brighter as well. So here we go. Let's find out once and for all from the good old FAA as to whether or not we can fly at night. As you know, government correspondence is very boring. So what I'm going to do is try to make it a little bit more interesting for you by reading different sections of their answers in different locations. So, without further ado, here we go. Big Ken? Yeah! Ken, good morning! I hope all is well with you today. Your email states, having a definitive answer would be extremely helpful. I could not agree more. As you know, UAS is an ever-evolving process, and I want you to have the most accurate, up-to-date information. To that end, I have formulated a response and I'm running it by the, in quotes, experts, please note that as this subject area continues to evolve and mature, there may be revised or updated guidance. But here are the current answers to your three basic questions. Can a hobbyist fly at night? The short answer is yes. All right. <laughs> Does a hobbyist require a waiver to fly at night similar to a Part 107 holder? No, there is no rule associated with night flying for hobby or recreational flying and therefore no ability or requirement to waiver anything. Ha! Ah. Can a remote pilot individual fly in accordance with the special rule for model aircraft when not operating for hire? Yes. <laughs> An RPC holder remote pilot certified may do so when flying for hobby or recreational purposes that are not in furtherance of a business. Not in furtherance of a business. As your email alludes to, the public finds the information difficult to find. And when they do find it, it can be confusing. For example, the requirement, 14 CFR, 14 CFR 101A-5 Two, to fly within visual line of sight of the person operating the aircraft. Could lead one to conclude that flying at night would make this virtually impossible. Additionally, 14 CFR stipulates that aircraft flown for hobby or recreation must be operated in accordance with a community-based set of safety guidelines and within the programming of a nationwide community-based organization. One such organization is the Academy of Model Aeronautics, the AMA whose guidelines state night flying requires a lighting system that provides the pilot with a clear view of the model's altitude and orientation at all times. Handheld illumination systems by themselves are inadequate for night flying operations and must be supplemented with other lighting systems. However, having said this, I was advised that the short answer to non-Part 107 night flying is that it is not prohibited. That's kind of a double negative. That means it's okay. No ifs, ands, or, <laughs> you know. I hope you find these answers useful and look forward to hearing from you in the future should you have any further questions or inputs for us. Respectfully, Johnny C. Victory. Dear Ken, your questions to the Nashville FSDO were forwarded to the FAA Office of Communications and answered by the UAS Integration Office. Please attribute anything you use to the FAA or an FAA spokesperson. You got it. Of course, Part 107 holders must get a waiver to fly at night. But my question is, do hobbyists fall under the same criteria? If you're a licensed pilot, but you're not flying at the time for money, can you fly at night without a waiver? <laughs> 
Can a hobbyist that is not a commercial pilot fly at night? There are those who say that they can fly at night in accordance with the special rule for model aircraft, public law 112-95 section 336. Section 336 does not specifically mention night flights. However, hobbyists must comply with all provisions of Section 336 Part 101 to conduct a model aircraft operation. These include the requirement to operate in accordance with a community-based set of safety guidelines and within the programming of a nationwide community-based organization. The most prominent but not the only set of safety guidelines, is the Academy of Model Aeronautics Safety Code. You should check with them to determine their guidance on night flying. Also, is it possible to be a Part 107 holder and still fly as a hobbyist, or does having a certification preclude one from being able to choose between the two? You can continue to operate as a hobbyist under Section 336 Part 101 and hold a Part 107 remote pilot certificate at the same time. Keep in mind, you can fly for both hobby and commercial purposes under Part 107. However, you cannot mix and match the requirements from one set of rules with those of the other. Additionally, if your hobby or recreational operation does not meet all the Section 336 Part 101 requirements, it must be conducted under part 107. Well, it's been almost exactly two years since I made that video, yet all of the facts still hold true to this day. Yes, this is the same shirt, and yes, I've washed it since then. Probably twice. I stand here on the steps of the Carroll County Courthouse in Huntington, Tennessee with my laminated 14 CFR part 107.29 daytime waiver. I'm very proud of this. There's only, according to the FAA, 4,542 of these issued in all of the United States. Now, of course, there is a provision that allows you to hide your information, so maybe not all of the waiver holders are listed. And so now with the waiver, I'm legally allowed to do this. I can fly at night and make money with the footage. There's not a lot to see here in small town USA, but at least it's legal. I have had opportunity to do some great filming at night. It's a great thing to have in your hip pocket, especially if you're droning for money. There's a lot of potential clients that you will have that want those beautiful nighttime shots. I get a lot of emails from people asking, how did you do it, Ken? What's the secret? Well, there's not really a secret other than to be very diligent and careful as to what you put in the application because the FAA after all is a government agency and they want you to dot all the I's and cross all the T's and cross all your I's and all that stuff. So the first tip is to go over your application very carefully and make sure you get it right the first time. The second tip is if you live in a big city, don't. I really believe that it helps your application process to be in a small town. This is just my hunch, but I think the FAA likes to spread out the daytime waivers, so if there's more people applying for them in a larger city, they will probably, in my opinion, opt to grant waivers to those in uh, different areas, smaller towns, like this one that you're seeing before you. So if you live in a big city, maybe try using the address of a friend who lives in East Jabit or somewhere. That might help you. The other tip and again, this is just conjecture, it's just my opinion. I think it helped me when I put on the application that I was going to be using my drone to help out local search and rescue. I think that helped me. It may help you. Uh, I wouldn't lie about it, but you know, leave yourself open to authorities in your area to have access to use of your drone and that may help you with the application process. Again, I'm going to put some links in the description, some helpful links, some uh, sample applications, and a few FAA links that may help you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I really appreciate it. Until next time, buh and bye.
This video lovingly sponsored by RemotePilot101.com. If you are serious about making money with your drone, whether it be photography or FPV, well, then you're going to need from the FAA a 14 CFR Part 107 certification. And the best place to study for that certification is RemotePilot101.com. Jason Shepard is a pilot and author of eight best-selling aviation flight training books. And yes, taking tests suck, especially government tests. But Jason breaks it down into 10 easy lessons into little digestible pieces that even someone like me can learn from. And if I can do it, you can do it, by golly. Each lesson is streamlined. There's no fluff. Everything you need to know for the test and nothing more. Plus, it's regularly updated, so if something new comes out, a new regulation, or the FAA just has a mood swing, Jason will let you know about it. Use Heron18 to get 30% off. That knocks the price down to 104 bucks. Look at that! Boom! Magic time! You wouldn't drive without a driver's license. Don't fly without a UAS license. RemotePilot101.com